So continuing the previous video in which we talked about the switch statement, I'm gonna take a look at a bit at the syntax and how the switch statement actually evaluates uh, variables here. So first things first, why do we need to actually type in break every single time we have a case here? So, right, we know that if we run this very nicely, if we type in any of the cases from out here, if you type in one, the code below the colon is going to be executed, but only until the break, right? So here we're gonna just get you selected lemons on the screen, which is this uh, statement that got executed. Now what happens if I omit this break statement, right? If I omit this break statement, something interesting happens. So if I type in, well, if I type in zero, that's the same thing, nothing really changed there, but if I actually type in one now, the one that I actually removed the break statement from, you'll notice that uh, both you select the lemons and oranges got printed on the screen. So what actually happened here? Uh, fruit was one, so it matched this case. It executed this line of code like usual, but it further executed the next line from the next case because it didn't find a break point or break statement really. So it uh, actually executed this one and also executed this one. And then it actually broke out of the switch here. So this is why we got both you selected lemons and oranges. If I do the same thing, but uh, on, uh, for example, on this one, well, you'll notice that if I type in two now, I'm gonna get also the print statement from the default uh, case, right? So this is why I told you that you kind of have to type in the break uh, statement unless you're doing something more uh, complicated, in which case you probably know what you're doing. So if you don't break out of a case, what you're really saying is I want to execute the next, uh, the code from the next case from below, both for case one and case two, because, well, if it's case one, it's gonna execute this line of code and then go ahead and execute this one and then break out of, out of the switch loop or not really a switch loop, a switch statement. And then uh, if fruit is two, it's just gonna start executing this line and simply break out of the switch statement. In which case this line of code got executed for both case one and case two. So as you can see, this can be used to sort of uh, basically create a conditional or, right? We, with the if else version, you can create conditional or, conditional and, and so on and so forth. Here, not so much, you only have conditional ors really. And uh, to do so, for example, if I want to execute the same statement for both cases, what I can do is just delete the whole code from here and just type in you selected oranges or lemons, right? And then now, because both of these cases point to the same uh, the same block of code, if you run it, well, if I type in one, it's gonna say you selected oranges or lemons. And if I type in two, it's gonna also say the same thing. So this is how you can sort of uh, execute the same code for multiple cases if you need to. Now there's one more limitation regarding the switch statement is that uh, it can only allow integral types. So I cannot, for example, I have here the code changed so that I'm actually reading a string instead of a uh, number. So I'm just declaring here a character array. I'm just getting the string from the standard input and I'm just adding also a uh, null terminator at the end of it uh, to remove the backslash n at the end. Um, so basically here we have an, a string, but as you can see, the compiler does give me an error saying that it does need an integral type. So you are not really allowed to use strings here and add uh, cases as strings, something like this. At least not in C. In other languages, you might be able to, but in C, you actually can't. You can You have to have uh, basically integrals. So in that case, you are kind of forced to use uh, an if else chain. So you can check if the string is actually oranges or if the string is actually lemons and so on and so forth. And it's really all I wanted to talk about uh, the switch statement. It's sometimes useful, but in most cases, you're better off to just use an if else chain, in my opinion. Sure, you might have some really, really long if else chain that 
you might want to change it to a switch statement, but in most cases, it's a pretty small one and you can just treat it as an if else uh, statement. And you're not, you don't have this limitation where you cannot uh, use strings or you cannot actually uh, have an end conditional operator between the cases. Also, one more thing I forgot to mention is that you don't actually have to have a break statement at the last case, but uh, well, usually if you have a default case, it's not really needed to add the break statement. But if you have, for example, uh, if we don't have this case here, it would be nice to have this break here because at one point, if somebody adds another case to the switch statement, they might forget about the break statement, right? So I hope this was useful. Thanks so much for watching and I hope uh, you learned something out of it. Take care. Bye.